Jenna and Jack. How are you guys doing? Very well, thank you. All the better for speaking to you. Of Jack, um, I'm going to start with you. You went and found another movie that requires for you to have a moustache. I'm picking <laughs> up a chain. I, I was literally just talking about this. I was, I was and apparently still am the go-to man for moustaches. Um, I, I, I can go quite a, I can grow, grow quite a, quite a beast of a moustache when, when, when needed. And of course, Jenna, you've come a far cry from playing a purple flower. Uh, here you are in Antebellum. <laughs> Gosh, that's like some real like deep history stuff there. That's oh, amazing. I have been stalking you all day. And it's so funny, Jenna, because um, as I did my research on you, this article came up and it said, adorable Jenna Malone. And I was like, you have obviously not seen how dirty this girl is in antebellum, okay? <laughs> I want to know, like, where do you go? Like, who, t- obviously it, it's something outside of you to be that evil. So surely there's something you have to do to prepare to get into that state of mind. What is it, Jenna? I mean, you know, it's like something about depravity just makes me want to put more compassion there. You know, something about the sort of vile, disastrous pit of humanity makes me, you know, as just a human, as a mother, what makes me want to look at it and say, how, why, you know, Mm -hmm. when? I just feel like all of us have this great capacity for good and this great capacity for horrible things. And I think that we have to ask ourselves those really important questions. And I think, I don't know, I've just never been scared as an actor to kind of just dive right into those spaces because I feel like somebody has to, you know? And I mean, I totally agree with you. And Jack, I'm gonna pull you in here. Speaking of diving into spaces, I know for your role in Boardwalk Empire, you tested your voice on your brother. Who do you test something like this on? Like the the role you play (laughs) in entertainment? Obviously, somebody has to be like, that's it. That's the one. We're going with that one. Who did you test on this time around? Yeah, it's so funny because I always, I, I've always come up with a voice before I come up with anything else, like of a character. It's weird. I've always, I've always thought because I, I, I found when I was growing up, when I heard someone speak, I, could not, I knew who it was like that. And I was like, isn't that amazing that we have so much power with our voice? That our voice yeah. controls our mood, our anger, our love, our hatred, the way you speak tonally and who they are. It says a lot about the character. This, I have a really good dialect coach called Liz Hemmelstein, who's brilliant. Um, yeah. But on this one, um, I sort of tested out on set. Like we, we were thrown right into it. And it was, um, I think that was the best thing about it is being thrown into something like this because you don't want time to think. You need to react. You need to sort of be in it. You need to, um, uh, you know, you don't, in a sense, it's, it was quite, it was such a intense and mm. relevant and urgent and important, you know, film that we felt that we were making, that we, um, we sort of just went in with full gusto and uh, were given permission to, uh, to really go there. And I mean, at a time like this, where the world is at the moment, and currently, you know, the things happening in Africa, in America, uh, I really feel that, thank you so much for doing this role, guys, uh, for doing this movie, because you can protest in many ways. And I really felt like you guys doing Antebellum was you guys joining the protest, you know, against the gravities of the world at the moment. So thank you for your time. (gasps) There she is. Guess what? Daddy is going to get you dressed for school today. We are descendants of the gods. This land was always ours. But we must never relent. We're nowhere and everywhere. You're from Virginia, right? I can tell. You're special. We are the future. You, you're not like the others. That's over. What a 
are we doing? What is the plan? We go tonight. 911, what is your emergency? I haven't had my coffee yet. I'm <laughs> you in my come? pants. I'm in my underwear. <laughs> but you know, you just have to make the upper level look good. That, that's all you need to do. And then the rest <laughs> is just like... <laughs> Business at the top, party at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> You're it's, like a mullet. <laughs> it's like a mullet. <laughs> Business at the front, party at the back. <laughs> party at the back all day. <laughs> I'm so glad we could finally do this. I'm really, yeah. really stoked. I mean, what took you so long? Golly. I'm so sorry. I, it, it's all me. I take hey, all the I blame. I was like, but then and then? I take all the blame. The first <laughs> night we got hit by load shading and you're from Zimbabwe, so you know exactly what that is. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's now coming. Our, our plagues have now come to South Africa. Yo, yo. Okay. So, and then I was so bleak because I only got to speak to two of the cast members and I loved the movie. Okay. Yes. Like, I absolutely loved it. I want to make sure my volume is high here so that my listeners can hear. There you go. I absolutely loved it. And I got back to the station the next day and I couldn't stop speaking about it to, to my colleagues. And, and, and I, I was like, it is the biggest twist. It is the biggest twist I have seen in any movie since Keza Solze in The Usual Suspects. <laughs> right? And, and, Shem, and I've been watching all your interviews and you can't give the story away. And I see you want to because people are not grasping. I'm just like, watch the movie. <laughs> no, you got to check out the movie. You have, you to, have to watch the movie. And I mean, I for me, this is a far cry from Studio 263, right? Oh. Golly, you had you went there, <laughs> <laughs> right? It's a far cry from you wanting to be a hotel owner. So yeah. you, we almost lost you to the tourism industry. Give me the day your mind changed. Why did it change, Tongai? You know what? I, I've 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 been very fortunate that I, I I am pretty good at a lot of things, which could be a problem or uh, a good thing. But for me, it obviously posed one because I I wanted to do a lot of things. And at one point I wanted to be a dentist and I was like, you know what? I can go into tourism. I want to be a chef because I love to cook, you know? So I was like trying to find things, but you know, this, this is a great thing about exploring and experimenting yeah. by process of elimination. I started to realize like, I don't like this. I don't want to do this. But the one thing that was constant was my acting. Cause I did amateur theater at Reps theater in, in Arare and then but that was the one thing that was remaining that was just like, I have total fun and fulfillment in this. So it was a no brain after a while. I was like, you know what? I don't know how this is going to play, uh, play, play out, but this is what I want to do. Well, I can see how, you know, you want to be a chef because it's still creative. You're still, you're creating something. Yeah. It's the dentist, it's the dentist one that, because I mean, <laughs> I, I guess you I can be love honest, teeth. my teeth. I don't know. I love teeth. I don't know why. It was always a fascination with me. Like, you know, 14, 15, I was like, man, this is so cool. And even start looking at, you know, going to dentistry school here in the States. Uh, but again, 15, 16, what do you know? What like, you I'm know? already thinking like, ah, yo, yeah, I'm going to be a senior now. Hey, first team basketball. Like, look at me ball. And then the dentistry thing just was just, just like that. Yeah. Out the window. So <laughs> you, you found out on a Friday that the directors liked you and they wanted to see you on Monday uh, for this movie Antebellum. And in your mind, you thought they want you to come and audition again after seeing your first yeah. audition video, right? Yeah. And then your people are like, no, no, it's not another audition. They just don't <laughs> want to see you. And, you and, and then they say to you, go meet them and just be yourself. So 
I'm so scared for you now as I'm listening to the story because how do, how how are you yourself when you walk in? Like, do you practice? I'm gonna sit like this. Yo, no, how are you yourself? I don't know because you you're constantly playing this thing like, okay, I don't know why I'm here because this is my first time I'm having like a director's meeting. Like, you know, ah. how how do I respond? Like, am I supposed to be formal? Do I become very chill because if I become animated and beat me, maybe that could be like that. Like, oh, maybe this is the wrong guy. Like. <laughs> so, so I just went there. I mean, they ask questions, but I try to just be observant and you know just be quiet. And so they were talking and talking and talking and just telling me their vision and you know why they thought that I would be the perfect match to this thing. But it was in that moment when I was sitting there, I just burst into tears, like. You, you, you should understand, like, you know, when you've been on your hustle for like 10 years, where it's the constant beating, and then one day somebody just opens the door and says, come in, and you're like, what? 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 But wait, Tungai, in a way, you know, as much as you were going in to clinch the deal, they are first-time directors, so I'm pretty sure that they were wanting to clinch the deal with you, right? You know? Because, I mean, it's a first-time director. Anything can yeah. happen. Is that, is that something that you had in the back of your mind that, woo, this could go south quickly? Not, not, not necessarily, because I was just excited. Like, man, this is my first studio picture. Like, what, what do I need to do to actually let them know that I am already sold to this thing? Like, you ain't got to tell me. If you tell me, like, yo, we're going now, I'll be like, okay, let's go. <laughs> you know? So... I was excited that they were first time directors because I think they, they usually come with a fresh mm. idea and fresh eyes, mm. you know, which is, is something that you may not necessarily see in Hollywood all the time. So mm. on that note, it was just like, well, I've got nothing to lose. Like, you know, I, I guess they're also trying to impress me, like you said. So yeah. it's a win-win. So, okay. So from that Friday to that Monday, to then reading the script and then you guys are, you know, you're rehearsing and then you're on the plantation, which you were on for two months, I believe. Uh, and then I'm pretty sure you, you, you get together as a cast or you get sent, you know, pieces of the movie uh, to when you watch the entire project. When mm. do you realize, my word, we have a project here. We have a smash hit. I, I think it's day one when you have your first shot and then you just go back to see like the footage that you just shot and you just see how beautifully it's been captured. Like, I think for me, it doesn't, doesn't take too much to impress me, but yeah. that shot, because I mean, the cinematographer, you know, he was amazing. That guy, whoever that guy is, that guy's on drugs because he's amazing. The <laughs> shot of, you know, Janelle on the horse, um, you guys on, on the field, the way the yeah. camera would come through the fields and onto your faces. The opening scene with the score, I, come on. it haunts me. It, it come on. haunts me. You know, <laughs> before anybody said anything in that movie, that first five minutes, yeah. I was, and I watched it alone in the cinema, right? Because of COVID, social distancing. Yeah, so yeah, I was yeah. alone. And I can't even look around and be like, <laughs> <laughs> do you see what's happening? <laughs> I can't because I'm alone, right? So tell me, to you, for me, the movie changed when the phone rang. So I, I'm doing this properly so I don't give away the script. For right. me, the movie, the crux of that movie is when the phone rings. And then you're like, what is happening? happening. When is the crescendo for you? Uh, I think with everybody, it was the same thing. When I read oh. the script, when, when that moment popped up, I literally threw the script down. <laughs> I'm in my apartment and I'm screaming, no way, no way, what? This, what? So you pick it up and you're like, oh my gosh, like this is, this is like, it could be. So like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it was just like, a, just like a slap, slap to the face, a slap yeah. to the future, slap to the past. And it's just yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, and then there was just so many ties and connections to what's currently happening, you know, the last six months in America. Mm -hmm. So you see just how timely this thing is. And it's just like, it just puts things into perspective. Like, I mean, the past really is not the past, you it's, know? Yeah, 
it's still know, here. It's, and you, you saw, right, when you say it slaps you to the future, it slaps you to the past. Because <laughs> now you are a person living in the present and you feel like, wait a minute, exactly. what, what's the difference? What's exactly. the difference? Yeah. And, and I love the fact that you said that you did a lot of research. You know, you, you didn't just assume that being black qualifies you for this role. So you read up on American history. You read up on the slave trade. And mm -hmm. I was laughing to myself because looking at you on paper, born in Zimbabwe, studied in South Africa, working in America, what does this black man have to do <laughs> to learn more about oppression? <laughs> Come on. Come yeah. on. Like, it is the, 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 the literal you know, slave translate, trans, 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 that, that word, trans, that transatlantic, word. yes. Transatlantic. You know, movement, transatlantic, you know. Yeah. Like, it's just like you, you've experienced that, you experience essay, and then you come and you start to experience that in, in, in America. And it's just like, wow, you know, yeah. there's constantly this, we're going to put, keep you under our thumb. Like, we don't want you to really go out there and become everything you should be because yeah. we don't know just how excellent you will be. And it's, oh, and that's the crazy thing. It's like, I remember saying in one interview, like how, notice how people like African-Americans have excelled in an environment that system, systemically keeps them, them down. Ooh. How much more, if they were to be given the liberties yeah. and the freedoms that, yeah. you know, everybody else enjoys, like not only do they elevate themselves, but it elevates the entire nation and the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The fact yet, that you, you can be born in Houston, yet your name is spoken in China, you know, I, when, 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 when the system was built for you to not even make it down the street, exactly. you know, forget to New York, forget to Atlanta, <laughs> here you are in Japan, and you Japan. are a huge thing. Yeah. It's, and I love what you said. You said, the color of my skin is a threat everywhere, yeah. right? What conversations are happening when the cameras are not rolling? Because you, 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 you're shooting, you know, this heavy, heavy, heavy topic, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and the backdrop of it, it's really happening. You know, you, mm -hmm. you know you, you, the George Floyds are happening. The Breonna Taylors are happening. You know, uh, they, it's, it, kids are getting killed. Troy, you know, is getting shot yeah. for wearing a hoodie. And, and then you guys are shooting this. So when, when the cameras stop, you know, and obviously there's black and there's blacks in the cast and there's also whites. What mm. are the conversations that are happening as a cast now? Because I feel like this movie is great because it's a protest. Mm -hmm. So what conversation were you guys having with each other? You know, what's interesting is that um, the, um, the cast fundamentally understand, you know, the mm. issues at hand. Um, you know, they may not have necessarily experienced it, but mm. they are empathetic to the cry and the plea. So there was more about them. It was more about them actually saying, look, I actually want to delve deeper and yeah. to understand the, the, the psychology behind what the trauma that you guys have experienced. We see it mm. physically, mm. but now I need to know to really understand why certain things are happening. So they're literally putting themselves in our shoes and being like, whoa, this, this world is very restrictive. I mm. never realized it was this daunting for you because every day you leave your home, you, the fear of you just being stopped in a car could mean life or death. Mm. You or know, sleeping in your that? bed. Yeah, or sleeping in your bed in your own home. Your you own know? home. You know, and yet you have people like, you know, unfortunately, you know, the, the, the privileged ones where they can walk to their door and cuss out a cop and swear and slam the door and like, come here with a warrant, <laughs> you know? Mm. So I think for them, it, it's, 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 it's been an eye opener. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of uh, America to a certain degree has started to awaken to the reality of what we're trying to say and, you know, the, mm issues and the pains that African Americans have, have experienced for over 400 years. Mm. So the conversation keeps going and by God's grace, they will start to see the systemic changes that are needed, mm. you know, because somebody once said that, you know, you know, not just to disrespect all the police members, but, you know, some say that this was just a, another way of transformation from you know, what they used to do with the, with the slaves back in the day, they've just yeah. put a cop 
badges now. Yeah. And it's the same thing. It's the same modern day lynching, you know, rogue element. That doesn't mean that every cop, but those that still perpetuate that mindset are the ones that make mm. it very difficult for African-Americans to thrive. And, and to be fair, I mean, I hear the not every cop argument, but um, then, then, then we're all in the same boat because, you know, not every black man is a threat. Absolutely. <laughs> and yet, and, and yet uh, black people in America are being treated as such. So yeah. I, I, hear, I hear the not every cop. I totally buy into it. Yeah. Therefore, then you should allow us to also say, you know, can we be guilty before we are black? Mm. You, know, you know, find us guilty. Don't find us black. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Don't find because black. then you're telling me that law and the system as yeah. as different outcomes if you know because obviously we say law is blind no you know the justice system is it's got two eyes and it clearly sees <laughs> who uh, uh, yeah. to persecute and who it doesn't so come on you know, i watching a lot of the interviews for for this movie antebellum and i mean you guys spoke to press around the world what saddened me a bit and is i found black people are so scared to watch these movies because i understand that to them it's triggering. And I remember the one lady even said to you, I don't want to watch another black movie where, you know, blacks are in bondage. And I think, you know, people get a, a, a you know, a kick out of seeing black people in bondage. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I was just like, oh, just watch the movie because A, it's beautifully shot, you know. Uh, B, I think, you know, the, 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 the twist is, like I say, the twist of all twists that I've ever seen. Yeah. And C, it, it, it's got a different message to Django. It's got a different message to 12 Years a Slave. You know, mm. I think, you know, it, you know, the directors came through and they really did something that was different. Would mm. you agree? What do you say to people who are like, I don't want to watch another slave movie? You know, I, I understand the, the trigger that it is. And I mean, you're from Zimbabwe. I am South African. You know, mm. we know these triggers. We understand yeah. the trigger. But what do you say to people who don't want to watch it because they just feel like it's another slave movie? <sighs> such a broad question but yeah. it's it's so important that people see these types of films because i said you know if you don't watch this one i will mm. guarantee you in five years six years from now you're going to watch a movie about the women that started the black lives matter movement why why are you okay with us showing these films about black people constantly trying to come out of these justice systems clearly it's telling you that there's something wrong with the system mm. and if until that thing changes we've got to remind them continually until it gets into their heads and be like okay you know what maybe after 400 years man we might need to change a few things you know so yeah. we have an obligation as artists to continue to say this because whoever that person was and, and people that think that way they're not saying that about rap music. They're no. not saying that about anything else. Like, yeah, I'm emancipated. I don't need this. I don't need that. Why do you need to keep reminding yourself that you're this type of person who don't need nobody because you can do it all by yourself, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. as artists, we have an obligation to continually call out injustices until they are fixed. Because once that person can have the justices and the liberties that if, she, if they are complaining about anything, then that's why we as artists are, are, are here for. Doing your job. Yeah. But if they're cool with it and they're happy with life and they don't have any issues, then you know what? I might just take a step back and say, yeah, I think we need to stop doing this. But I'll guarantee you, if you're Black, you have been dealing with some systemic issue that you're not happy about. And that's why we're here. And for that reason... We need to continue to say these things and hopefully continue to further the conversation because you know what? Maybe one day, just one day, this film or this conversation might be the thing that breaks the bow that everything is rectified. Yeah. So, I mean, Tungai, like I said at the beginning, Studio 263, you've been on backstage, you know, you've been on Leon Schuster's Mr. Bones. <laughs> Uh, you know, you're out there doing American Horror Story. I think your CV is so vast, yet to me, the one that stands out the most is Uber Driver and Valet Driver. <laughs> yes, yo, you have to survive, Chava. You have to survive. You know and what you I mean? Know 
You know what I loved is you said you, there were points when you would be parking the cars of people that you were currently acting with and you would be like, look, I need to pay the bills. Mm. Um, and, and, and you'd be driving people who are having these discussions in the back of your car, directors and producers. Did you never want to just turn around and be like, pick me, pick me, I'm good? No, no. I think it, it was one of those things where I feel like God was just really putting me in position to show me uh, what my future looked like because I've oh. realized that, you know, me parking cars, doing eight hour shifts or eight, 10 hour shifts, five days a week, you know, there was something that I needed to learn. But in the same process, it was an eye opener for me to see what it looks like to be a successful um, uh, professional. Because I had this one moment where I was parking cars and I was talking to a friend of mine and this hotel, the SLS, is very fancy. Oh, and I love it. It's, yo, it's, it's, yes, that's, what, that's where they, they, they put us up when we come do junkets. Oh my Yes, God. yes. So I probably parked your car. I probably parked your car. Who knows? <laughs> I was one of those guys, a little valet dude. I worked there. And uh, they happen to have the, I think the American Music Awards. So they have a lot of the, uh, the stars come to, 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 you know, get ready and get all, yeah, you know, yeah. get out. And I remember um, at the time, Flo Rida was, was big, was huge. And he came through and he had this like four, five, six cars, like 25 people in his entourage. And it was just, you know, just women and all kinds of just teaming around him. And for a moment, me and my boy were like, oh man, like, this is what I'm talking about. I can't wait. Yeah. yeah. But as he was, I looked, I looked behind him and there was a man standing who had a phone and he was on his, uh, on his phone. Uh, and his car came through. It was like a, a Mercedes or a Lexus, like a seven C's type vibe car, yeah. man, you know, in a suit, you know, sleek, sleek back hair jumps in his car. Nobody knew him. Nobody, you know, paid no, paid him no attention. And this is what God showed me. He was like, Flo Rider is rich. The man that was standing behind him was the owner of the hotels. Oh. Nobody would have guessed this. And mm. for the first time, it shifted my understanding of what it means to be wealthy but quiet, where Nobody knows that the hotel that Flo Rider was living in or staying at belonged to this man behind him. And yet, you know, no disrespect to the man, but you know, it's Hollywood, you know, the flash and the pump was yeah. like, you don't need that. You're not so trained. Me, yeah, it trained me without even having to come into that position where next thing you're like, oh, Tonga is just this baller guy. And it's like, but what happened to you? So that lesson, change my perspective and just how I should appreciate where I'm going and yeah. what is to become. Because if I want to become a family man, that cannot be a part of my lifestyle. That ain't it. That ain't it. That you ain't know? it. So many lessons like that. I, I definitely, definitely learned for me personally. And it was such a eye opener to be like, thank you, Lord. I needed this. Mm. Well, look, I'm so glad you had all these lessons because it led us to you being in this movie, this project that I am absolutely in awe of. I cannot wait for it to drop in South Africa. I think it drops in about two weeks' time. Yeah. I'm, I'm watching it on Apple, as you can see in the back there. Come on. I've bought it. It's like it's in my library. And when my friends come around, I'm like, guys, you have to see this movie. <laughs> and... And like I say, you know, it, it just hits so many points. If you yeah. see the, 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 guy, the person who did the score or the guy who did the cinematography, please just tell them I think that, like, t t this is award-winning stuff for me, really. Yes. And I absolutely love it. And I'm proud of you. And I'm pretty sure, you know, in December, you, everybody will know. And everybody will be proud. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Chung. I am so glad Thank we did this. Thank you. This was great. We should do it again next time. You know what? I, I will take you up on that offer and I won't be late. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You take care. Bye. Bye.